Phantom Trigger is a brand new dungeon crawler hack and slash coming to PC and Nintendo Switch this week. The game was developed by Bread Team and currently retails for $15 on both Steam and the Nintendo eShop. First up, the story. Phantom Trigger's 5-6 hour story gives you two perspectives woven together to tell a single story. You get the point of view of Stan, a married man who one day suffers a seizure from a mysterious illness he succumbs to. You learn more about Stan, his relationships, and his way of thinking through the little dialogue scenes that play out in the normal world. On the flip side is where the main gameplay lies, in the different reality known as the Neon World. Here you play as the Outsider, a mysterious man without memories in this new world. As you explore the dungeons in this world, flashbacks will play out showing you what happened to Stan as both sides are woven together to explain what's going on. There's actually multiple endings in this game that play along with the choices you make in conversations in the Neon World as the Outsider. The story is alright, nothing spectacular though. It honestly ends a bit abruptly and it isn't entirely satisfying or feels like it's a worthy payoff to the story the game was trying to build up. If anything, the game feels like it just added the story just to justify the gameplay in some way. In those aspects, the story is just mediocre. Gameplay on the other hand is a much more solid and satisfying experience. Outside of the little dialogue scenes in the normal world, most of your time will be spent as the outsider in the neon world. The gameplay here is very much like a dungeon crawler with a main hub world. In the hub world is where you can speak and interact with the dwellers of the neon world that send you on missions into sectioned off areas through portal. These missions usually have you clearing out the enemies in said areas in smaller sections. While exploring a given area, you'll find checkpoints that heal you and also create a brand new spawn point for the next time you die. Occasionally you'll find yourself in sectioned off areas that are surrounded by flames. These are much more close-knit quarters that have you fight waves of enemies before being able to freely move around in the dungeon again. Ultimately, you want to clear the dungeon of enemies and retrieve the list of items that one of the Neon Dwellers tells you to get, so that you can open the door that leads to the final boss for that area. That level setup pretty much repeats itself for 5 worlds, creating the main game for Phantom Trigger. In these worlds, you'll fight smaller enemies with your different types of weapons that you'll earn over time. In total, you'll get about 3 weapons, 4 if you count the dash move as an attack move, and as you fight these enemies, you'll find shrines that you can interact with to upgrade your attacks. As these moves are upgraded, you can cross combo them to fight off enemies and even create brand new attacks that combine both types of attacks. These can spark off brand new moves that are really cool like a fire ring that protects you or a freeze ray that freezes enemies in place. The combat is really cool and more complex than you'd think just by seeing the trailer for the game. Enemies are pretty challenging too, though they're quite repetitive in design. For the most part, the smaller area enemies will just be variations of 3-4 to four types of enemies and the variations are just element based. Certain scenarios will give the enemies invincibility that, unless you hit them with the right attack, they'll pretty much keep living on forever, and that invincibility rotates every so often to a different type of attack, adding on to the challenge of those fights. I would have loved to see more enemy time variations for the dungeons, outside of just color palette changes that are quote unquote element based variations, though I won't lie and say that they weren't challenging, they definitely did put up a fight. The boss fights are much better, each being uniquely designed and giving you a brand new experience every time you fight a boss. Each boss has a specific way to be defeated, so in itself the boss fights are almost like a puzzle of sorts. So overall the gameplay feels solid, especially in the combat department, with my main grief being pretty much the lacking enemy variation and no real use of the HD rumble on the Nintendo Switch at all. Though I do appreciate that you can play the story mode in co-op mode with a friend locally, and if you have a Nintendo Switch, you can play with a single Joy-Con just sharing a single health bar all together. Now let's move on to the visuals, and yeah, this game totally looks like Hyper Light Drifter. Though I'd say gameplay-wise, it feels like its very own thing. If you're playing on PC, you get some really nice looking particle effects, especially with the glowing lights and the flame torches. They all look really beautiful, along with the 1080p 60 visuals on PC. It all meshes together well, though sadly if you're playing on PC, you don't really get any customization features for your display settings. On the Nintendo Switch, it looks like the game is still hitting 60fps, though at a lower resolution that could either be 720p or 900p. It definitely does look a bit softer than the 1080p image I'm getting on the PC version. Luckily, that soft image is really only for the dock version, it's really hard to tell if you're playing in portable mode since the smaller screen size works better with this pixel density and the art style. The one hiccup I did see on the Switch version is that there's a slight stutter when hitting a checkpoint, though it never really hindered the gameplay at all, it was just a small little nitpick. In the sound department, Phantom Trigger features a lot of techno and electronic heavy music that totally contributes to that whole cyberpunk aesthetic that this game is going after. The sound effects of something like a lightsaber activating every time you do an attack, or just an electronic piano key, 
during the dialogue conversations, it all just really captures that futuristic feeling that this game is trying to present itself as, and it really is well done. In the end, Phantom Trigger gives us a short science 5 to 6 hour story that you can play all alone or with a friend locally if you want to play co-op. The gameplay is fun and challenging, though it can be really repetitive in design, even more with the enemy types. Even though it does look like Hyper Light Drifter, it plays differently and it definitely feels like its own thing despite looking similar. With that said, the mediocre story along with the repetitive gameplay makes it a hard sale at the $15 price tag. It's an enjoyable game in some regard, but I don't think it's worth picking up at $15. Perhaps hold off until this game goes on sale for about $10 or less. That's my review of Phantom Trigger on PC and Nintendo Switch. I believe it is coming to PS4 and Xbox One in the future, but at the time being, it's only on PC and Switch. If you have any questions about the game or the review, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below, or just hit me up on my social networks on Twitter and Instagram. I'm very active on there, and I'll answer your question pretty quickly on there. As always, thank you all for taking the time to watch my review. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next one.